According to information published by the U.S. Department of Defense on January 13, 2025, the U.S. Navy has officially announced the names of the 5th and 6th nuclear-powered supercarriers of the upcoming Gerald R. Ford class, namely CVN-82 and CVN-83. Specifically, the aircraft carriers will be named after former U.S. Presidents William J. Clinton and George W. Bush. Gerald R. Ford class carriers are a significant departure from the Nimitz class vessels, incorporating cutting-edge technologies to enhance operational efficiency, combat readiness, and crew safety. These carriers will utilize an electromagnetic aircraft launch system EMALS, to replace traditional steam-powered catapults, a change that dramatically increases efficiency while reducing maintenance. The enhanced launch system also supports a wider range of aircraft including the integration of unmanned aerial vehicles, a vital component of future naval warfare. Another innovation is the advanced arresting gear, designed for improved reliability and the safe recovery of a broader range of aircraft. This system represents a leap in versatility, reducing stress on airframes and increasing operational flexibility. Alongside this, the class features a fully electric integrated power system which replaces older mechanical designs to enable seamless power distribution. This capability not only supports current systems like radar and launch mechanisms, but also positions the carriers for integration with future technologies such as directed energy weapons. The vessel's dual-band radar provides superior situational awareness, combining air and missile defense functions in a streamlined package. This radar system enhances threat detection and tracking capabilities addressing the challenges posed by stealth aircraft and advanced cruise missiles. These technologies are complemented by increased automation across the ship, allowing for a significant reduction in cruise size while enhancing safety and efficiency. At approximately 100,000 tons, the Gerald R. Ford class is larger than its predecessor, the Nimitz class, but accommodates between 500 and 900 fewer crew members. The Gerald R. Ford class carriers are 333 meters, 1,100 feet long, 40.8 meters, 130 feet wide, and have a flight deck width of 78 meters, 270 feet. The carriers can carry up to 90 aircraft, including F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, F-A18E, E-F Super Hornets, E-2D Advanced Hawkeyes, EA-18G Growler Electronic Attack Aircraft, MH-60R-S Helicopters, and Unmanned Aerial and Combat Vehicles. The Gerald R. Ford class carriers can be armed with the Raytheon-developed Sea Sparrow missile, which is resistant to high-speed and highly maneuverable anti-ship missiles. The close-in weapon systems are rolling airframe missiles from Raytheon and Ramses. The Gerald R. Ford class carriers, including these two newly named ships, are designed for high sortie rates, enabling sustained air operations that are crucial in contested environments. With the ability to launch and recover aircraft at an accelerated pace, these ships will play a central role in maintaining air superiority and supporting joint force operations. Their nuclear propulsion systems provide virtually unlimited range, ensuring a persistent presence in strategic regions worldwide. Here are the names of the first six supercarriers in the Ford class, poised to become the backbone of America's naval power for the rest of the 21st century. The first-in-class aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, is named after the 38th U.S. President, the world's largest and most advanced aircraft carrier, completed its first full deployment in January, which the Pentagon extended in response to the October 7th Hamas attack on Israel. The second ship in its class, the USS John F. Kennedy, is named after the 35th U.S. President and shares its name with the last conventional aircraft carrier built for the Navy before the introduction of the nuclear-powered Nimitz class. The future carrier was originally scheduled for delivery in June 2024, but was delayed a year to July 2025 
so the Navy could do more work to prepare it for deployment to the Indo-Pacific. The future USS Enterprise is one of two Ford-class aircraft carriers not named after a U.S. president. It carries a distinguished name whose legacy includes the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, a decorated World War II carrier, and a battleship from the Barbary Wars more than 200 years ago. Still under construction at Huntington Ingalls Industries Newport News, the only U.S. aircraft carrier shipyard, Enterprise was originally scheduled for delivery in March 2028, but a Navy shipbuilding review found it will now be delivered no later than May 2030. The other Ford-class carrier without a U.S. president's name is the future USS Doris Miller. The future supercarrier, named after U.S. Navy sailor Doris Dory Miller, is expected to be delivered a year and a half later than originally scheduled in early 2032. Miller was a World War II hero of the Japanese surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Naming CVN-81 after Dory Miller is a much-anticipated recognition of a true American hero and icon. The future USS William J. Clinton honors President William J. Clinton, the 42nd President of the United States, who served two terms from 1993 to 2001. The future USS George W. Bush honors President George W. Bush, the 43rd President of the United States, who served two terms from 2001 to 2009. It will be the first Navy ship named after a president. The names follow a Navy tradition of naming aircraft carriers after U.S. presidents. Bush served in the Texas Air National Guard from 1968 to 1973 and flew the F-102 Delta Dagger fighter jet, while Clinton never served in the military. CVN-82 and CVN-83 will be the fifth and sixth aircraft carriers to join the Navy's fleet in the coming decade but the ships are not yet under construction, and a contract has not been issued to HII's Newport News.